Okay, for all of you attempting to do a BIOS chip replacement on this Lenovo W510, I hope this video helps you out a lot. So I'm about to show you here the location on the motherboard where that BIOS chip is located. It's located right up underneath this uh, plastic shielding here with a lot of other small components surrounding it. But that's it right there. And we'll just get a little bit of a closer look here on it. But on the board, you want to look for a label, a stamp on the board. We'll just pull back this, tape it off. But you want to look for a symbol on the board that says U30. We'll show you here in a sec. But this is the, the new BIOS chip that the customer supplied me. I'm putting it on for them. Comes in a nice anti-static bag and wrapped up nicely in a small piece of paper, but this will give you an idea of how much of a small component we're working with here. Just be sure everyone to do your research and be sure you're getting the right BIOS chip for your board. It would be a shame to go through all of this just to put the wrong BIOS chip on. So uh, it's real important that you do your homework on getting the right BIOS chip. But there you see it here. Smaller than a pinky thumbnail. A pinky nail. But there's your U30 stamp there on the board that I was talking about. That's what you want to look for. And I also want to point out that you need to be careful the way this BIOS chip is orientated. Shown here in red, the circle, is that that identifies pin number one. So we want to be sure that the new chip goes on the same exact way. Now we're working with a really small chip here as you can see. So I'd really highly recommend good lighting. I would recommend uh, in some type of magnification, whatever you're comfortable with. And definitely um, a hot air rework at least. I wouldn't try to use a regular soldering iron doing this I'll, unless you have some mad soldering skills. But you can see here the really small components that surround this. So we're going to have to protect those with my heat shield tape. So we'll just apply that and kind of push it all down and seal it down with with a plastic edge or, or something to kind of push it all down and get it get it tight on the board because we don't want this hot air that I'm going to be using to slip underneath that that tape so we'll just get all that secured protect all these little small components take your time this is the most uh, important part of the process I think so we'll kind of push this tape back to be sure I have room to work on my feet. Like so. So there's one side done. Push that back. Get that right. And then we'll move on to the other side here. We'll notice some more components over here that are going to pose a problem. We'll just get our tape down on this side the same way. You know, the worst thing that can happen really here, I mean, you, you can actually blow off these little resistors with, you know, if that heat gun gets under there, if that heat gets under there and it, it'll melt the solder on those small resistors and next thing you know, you know, you, you have a, a several resistors that are like stuck, stuck to the tape or blown off the board. We don't want that. So... We're going to do everything to prevent that here. So we're going to work our way all the way around the BIOS chip with our heat shield tape. And don't be scared to use plenty of tape. You know, more is better in this situation. Don't skimp on it. And as you see uh, on the top part of the screen here, there's no components, but I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of tape here anyway just to add a little bit more support to the other both sides of the tape there. Just just a smart thing to do, just add a little bit more security, if you want to say. Right, so that looks pretty good there. 
Let's go ahead and add our flux, and I'm going to use a toothpick, and this will give you another idea about how small this component is. Uh, I'm using a, the tip of a toothpick to apply my flux paste, and um, it's just, you know, it's a really small component, and I'm going to kind of show you a couple ways to manage, you know, using such a small chip using hot air can be a little bit challenging so let's see what we can do here so we've applied the flux here this is just fine you know if it's messy so what it's not gonna hurt anything so now we're going to start to apply the heat and you can see the flux there activating and that's going to help us get this chip off the board now we want to keep a straight 90 degree up and down angle with our hot air gun. We don't want to go anywhere to the sides because that's going to allow heat to slip underneath that tape. But you're going to see here, uh, we'll just slowly work our way a little closer. Got about a medium setting for the amount of heat and I've got some some tweezers here. I keep testing to see if it's come loose yet and it hasn't so we'll slowly get closer. I'm using a small nozzle, the smallest one that I have for my gun, and uh, that's what I've chosen to go with here. And you know, after a while, you get a little closer, you get a little hotter, and uh, this this bios chip will just come right off. Now, I do say, be sure to have the bios battery unplugged from this board before you start this process very important unplug your bios battery all right it and it looks like we're getting close here it's we're pretty doggone close to the chip with our hot air and i think this is going to about do it almost there gotta have patience notice how i'm straight up and down on the chip and there we go we're off excellent now at this point we're just ready to place our new BIOS chip in its place. Nothing really to prep here. We still have solder left on the board, enough solder to work this chip back on. Um, you might have to have a lot of patience here with, with this placing this chip, but what you want to do is get it as close as possible to lined up it doesn't have to be perfect because once the heat melts that solder it's pretty much going to like just fall into place but it can be used with a component this small it can be a little bit a little bit frustrating it takes some patience but and some steady hands but it can be done now i'm going to give you an example right now of what can happen when trying to reapply your chip and using too much air, look at there, it just blows right off the board. So, um, I, trial and error, I just learned to turn my heat, my uh, heating dial down, my fan dial down on my hot air. And we'll just line things up and give it another shot. This time I'm going to kind of hold it down a little bit with the metal tool that I have, keep things kind of lined up. And once it kind of sticks, now I'm getting to the point where the solder is starting to melt. And uh, again, I have a straight up and down angle on this. And as soon as, uh, as soon as this solder starts to molten, this chip will fall into place. And let's see, I think we may just zoom in a little bit here so we can kind of see the solder melt zoomed in here and just a second there goes the solder melting I don't know if you caught that but solder has melted the chip is in place I'll take the heat off I'll apply a little bit of pressure for a few seconds and take it off and our BIOS chip is now properly soldered to the board so great from this point it's all downhill. We're going to take off the tape, which leaves 
a little bit of a mess, but that's okay. It can be cleaned up. We'll check to see if all of our components underneath our tape are still in place as they should be. Pull this side up here. Oh yeah, so far looking good. Go this way, pull off the back side. Looks good here. And looks good here. I think we're going to have a job well done on this. We've got to make sure we get all of that tape off. I see a little bit here. We want to be sure that we don't miss any pieces of tape. All right. And then we can just kind of clean everything up with isopropyl alcohol, maybe some Goo Gone. Clean this motherboard up really good. And from that point, we can begin to reassemble our laptop and test it. All right, but we're using a little bit of a thicker wire brush here that's anti-static brush, which is a smart idea. But let's have a look at uh, our final result. And then there's our chip. And the components around it are all in place, looking good. I'd say this was a job well done. All nice and cleaned up. Let's, uh, let's get it put back together. And we're free to reinstall the BIOS battery, which is on the bottom shell of the, mother of the, uh, of the case itself. Put our shielding back. And then we can begin to reassemble our laptop and to see how our BIOS re chip replacement job went. Put the motherboard back in the, in the shell. Put the screws back into the board. get everything reassembled properly now I think the most common symptom of a fudged BIOS however way it's done I mean who knows there's several different ways you can screw up a BIOS you can flash it with the wrong BIOS you can lose power while you're trying to flash um, you can get impatient and stop the flash before it's complete thinking that it's hung but it's just not finished but in in almost all cases I've seen with bad BIOS flashes when you press your power button you get you get uh, you get lights on the board you get lights on the on the palm rest and uh, you get activity a hard drive activity light at first but no screen is is the main symptom of a bad BIOS and uh, there's several ways to try to troubleshoot that including trying to reset the, the CMOS um, in this case none of that worked uh, this particular customer said that he had tried to flash his BIOS and flashed it with the wrong BIOS he was actually trying to do some sort of BIOS mod. I, I don't know exactly what he was talking about there, but that's how it ended up in my shop. So we're getting things put together here. Kind of just speeding through stuff. Now we're to the speakers and wire management. Looks like we got our BIOS battery plugged in there. Getting close to the point of having to give this guy a shot. Fire it up and See what the moment of truth is. Okay, we're getting down to the palm rest now. In our touchpad. We'll get that put on.
Looking good. All right, keyboards next. Get our keyboard in once we put our memory in here. Keyboard goes right in. There we go. And we'll slide our battery in. And now it's time for the moment of truth. Now you can test this before you can test this before you get put it all back together. But I am confident that this was done correctly. So now we'll just power it on. And here there we go. Well, I hope this video helps any of you or hopefully helped someone, I hope, that's trying to do this repair to replace a BIOS chip. This is pretty much how it's done on all laptops. Uh, the smaller the chip, the more difficult the job, the way I see it, but uh, it is doable. You can find your BIOS chips um, online, on eBay. Uh, just shop carefully there and you'll be able to find you know, your, your make and model laptop. Find a uh, trustworthy seller there on eBay to do that. And um, good luck with doing that. Like I said, I hope this video helps uh, in anybody trying to, to uh, attempt this. Also, uh, hey, you know, if you're a little bit too nervous about doing it or, or you wouldn't dare touch it, you know, but you, you think your laptop may need a, a new BIOS chip, you suspect your BIOS has gone in it and you don't know who to take it to, hey, I offer, my company, TCR, offers a mail-in service. All you have to do is contact me at tim at timscomputerfix.net and I will be glad to give you all the details needed to ship me your, your laptop. I'll be glad to help you out in that way. You can find me at timscomputerfix.net. You can find out about me and more of my services. So thanks for watching my video. Please rate and subscribe. I really appreciate that. Thanks to all of you that have already done that. So until next time everyone, see you soon.